This video will help you fill out the top of section 2 in your unit 3 quadratic functions flipbook. And you see that I've got a bunch of things in this table filled out. What I would do right now um, is class pause the video right now. Go ahead and fill out all of these sections. And once you fill them out, then go ahead and start the video up again and I'll start talking about um, what we're doing with this particular table. Okay, I'm assuming you're back now and you're done filling out your um, headings and your columns over here. Now what this table is doing is we're going to go through the main properties of three different quadratic forms. Some of these we've discussed already in your flipbook. Um, one of these intercept form you haven't seen yet. And some of these properties we haven't even covered yet. But I want to give you this table so you can see that each of these forms gives us very specific information about this quadratic. Now I have not written these as functions. I've written them as equations. But you remember class, the y value here, you could substitute here f of x, g of x, whatever function name you want in this. So these can be written as equations or as functions. So what are the properties, our essential question, what are the properties of the three quadratic forms? Let's take a look at this one. This is known as standard form. Notice in standard form there are no parentheses. So one of the ways you can identify a standard form quadratic is there are no hang on one second here, there are no parentheses. No parentheses. So you can see the other two have some parentheses. So that's one way to tell a standard form quadratic. Let's take a look at what a standard form tells us. If you want to find the vertex of this parabola, if you want to graph this equation, you can actually pick out some information real quick from this equation. The first thing is, if you want to know the x value of the vertex, you can use this formula. Negative b over 2a. If you take the b value, flip the sign, so if this was positive, it would turn out negative here. If this were negative, it would turn out positive here. So flip the sign of the b value, divide that by 2 times the value of a, you would actually be able to find, quickly find, the x value of the vertex. The next part is the y value of the vertex. The way you would find that fairly quick is you would plug in plug in the x value the x value and find the y value so what you do is if you want to find both coordinates or both values of the vertex you use negative b over 2a to find the x value of the vertex, then you take that result, and I'll put an arrow here, you take that result, you plug it into your equation or your function, and you'll get the y value of the vertex. There's a very quick way on a standard form quadratic to find the vertex of the parabola. Next part is axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry for this particular equation, a standard form quadratic, is just the x value the x value of the vertex and in fact the axis of symmetry is always the x value of the vertex and I think you've already seen that in a previous video but just in case you haven't so here's how to find the axis of symmetry which divides any parabola into two equal halves. It's a vertical line that divides a parabola into two equal halves. It goes right through the vertex and the x value of the vertex tells us where the axis of symmetry is. Okay, the y-intercept, which is where this parabola will cross the y-axis, that's always going to be the value of c. So if there's a value of c right here, c will tell us where this parabola crosses the y-axis. 
And the last thing is, what are the x-intercepts? Where does this parabola cross the x-axis? Unfortunately, this particular form of a quadratic does not tell us that. All right, let's take a look at vertex form. Vertex form, you've probably seen this already in previous videos. Vertex form uh, is unique because it usually will have something subtracted or added from the x value or the input value, and then that whole thing will be quantity squared. And let's see what this tells us. Can we find the vertex x value from this? Absolutely we can. The vertex x value is just the value of h. And you can still see it right there in your equation. So h, remember class, and I don't know if I've talked about this before, but when we actually find the x value of the vertex looking at h, this one, I need to remind you, this one you will always flip the sign. The reason that is is because this equation actually has a minus sign here. And because there's a minus sign in the equation, if this said x minus 4, our h value is positive 4. If this said x plus 4, our h value is actually negative 4 because whenever you write out the equation, the minus sign, this subtraction sign, stays with the equation and then you have your value for x. So just remember, whenever you pull the h value out of a vertex form quadratic, you flip the sign. Now, the, the y value of the vertex is just found in the letter k. And this one, you keep the sign. And the reason that is because look at the equation. The equation has plus k there. That means if the equation had plus 4, k would be 4. If the equation said minus 4, k would be minus 4. So for k, you keep the sign. Can we find the axis of symmetry quickly from this equation, of this function? Absolutely. It's the same as standard form. The axis of symmetry is found by looking at the x value of the vertex, which in this case is just h. The x value of the vertex and we'll just make a note here in this case that's just going to be h. Can we find the y-intercept of the parabola quickly from vertex form? Nope. Not so easy to do. And can we find the x-intercepts if we have a quadratic in vertex form? Nope. Takes a little bit of work to find it with that form. Okay, last form, which you probably have not seen yet, is intercept form, and this is what it looks like. Intercept form is unique from the other two forms because it has a double set of parentheses. So I'll put um, double parentheses, and I'll just abbreviate this paren. And let's go ahead and put on here, this is a single parentheses. So this is what distinguishes intercept form. We also sometimes call that factored form. Can we find the vertex x value quickly with this form? Nope. Not so easy to do. Can we find the vertex y value? Nope. In fact, this form doesn't give us much of anything, really anything regarding the vertex. Does it give us the axis of symmetry? Actually, it does. The axis of symmetry is going to be p plus q divided by 2. So it's just the average of those two values, p and q. I'm going to change that q a second to have a little tail on it, otherwise it starts looking like 9. There we go, p plus, two, plus q divided by 2. Does the intercept form give us our y-intercept? No, it does not. Here is a key. The intercept form does give us something that standard form and vertex form do not. The intercept form gives us the x-intercepts, and they are just the values of p and q. The values of p and q are our x-intercepts. And let me do something here, change one more thing. This is going to be p and q. Not, no, don't know if you've noticed this yet, class, but take a look at the form. There's a minus sign in the form itself. That means that for P and Q to find the x-intercepts, we'll do the same thing as we did on the h value of the vertex form. You have to flip the signs 
when you pull P and Q out of the equation. So some of this is kind of advanced of what you guys have done so far. I just wanted you to fill this table out just to show you. We're going to be talking about standard form, vertex form, intercept form. The reason we have multiple forms is each one of these has its strengths. Standard form, we can find the vertex, axis of symmetry, and y-intercept y real fast. Vertex form, we can find the vertex and axis of symmetry. Actually, we find the vertex much faster than standard form. There's no calculations to do. Intercept form doesn't give us a whole lot of things. It does give us the axis of symmetry, and in particular, it gives us the values of our x-intercepts. And we'll find later in class why that is very important in real life.